Hi everyone. Uh, we're going to do the second user onboarding teardown, and this is Azar, and we have. I'm Wes Bush. Yeah, so we are going to tear down Salesflare today. Perfect. So we're just on the homepage right now, and we see that it's very easy to use, always up to date. But what is Salesflare? We don't know. We can look at the yeah. photo and start to see, okay, it kind of looks like a Trello board, but for sales. If I read below here, I finally find out that it is a software selling tool. So just right away, the immediate feedback I have is just that this value prop is really generic. And the easy to use is something that you see on a lot of company websites, but it's also one of those things that because everyone says it, no one really believes it. And so to actually recommend trying to lead with something else that you were mentioning is art before this, just some of the amazing capabilities that Salesflare has that not a lot of people know about, like their incredible mobile app. So there's some really under leveraged uh, benefits that this product has that I think would be worthwhile to showcase. What do you have to say? Yeah, yeah, I think um, they, they missed the differentiation factor. They like so many CRM tools as well. So I think if they were if they were able to say something very different about them compared to Pipedrive, HubSpot, or other tools which are there in the market, um, just to say, okay, no, this is what we are different. So um, I've seen their founder saying, um, um, we are making CRM um, more human. So yeah. they focus on like they say whatever you used to do manual you don't do anymore and that's what powerful feature of sales flare is and i i miss that there yeah and like i went to pipe drive before this and like i just saw the quote here like we make sales people unstoppable and i'm not saying it has to be like that but like what you mentioned too just like we make sales human how many people say that like a, a lot of times it is very automated or it feels inhuman but if it can truly deliver on that i think that would be something that could be an incredible value prop so that's for the the above the fold part of the home page um two comments here real quick just the white paper <laughs> why is this here this is a very yeah. odd spot and it doesn't really tie too much into uh, what the product is and some of the questions i have about the product so it just seemed kind of random as well as salesforce works with these platforms and at this point this is something that's useful information don't get me wrong it's just why is it here and why is it really at the top unless this is trying to get confused with social proof, which it's not really in that same regard. So this just goes into the product, which I thought was really well done in terms of focusing on the benefits and really just like, what do you get out of the product? But we're not gonna focus too much on that. Let's dive right into the product. So we're gonna sign yeah. up and we're on the free trial landing page right now. So you can see here, it's pretty, bear there's there's not too much going on it just says start your free 14-day trial ever input data again so it's really trying to reemphasize just that the core value that this is really easy to use one thing i do like here is that they really just go into the fact of what to expect so you're asking people at this point for a pretty big ask like can we access your google or office 365 account so people have anxiety about this kind of thing so this is actually really good, useful copy to have because some people are second guessing, do I trust this company? Is it, are they gonna spam me with something? And so I always recommend having some copy like this. So well done Salesforce for that. Um, just on the other side of that though, for improvements, I'd really just try and add some more um, value here. Like what is the, the core value? On the homepage, you really broke it down to like less input time and everything else, but maybe visualize it a little bit better because right now it feels I don't know what your opinion is is there but it feels pretty bare <laughs> yeah one thing I would just add is that they have so the reason why I, I tried sales flare was one of the biggest brand I know was that audacity and though yep. if they can show the testimonial of audacity right they are using it it really helps me to um, continue my trial experience actually definitely so I'm just gonna sign up with Google and go through this whole process right now so what, what's your opinion on having a google sign up or having an email or password sign up uh, in the meanwhile it's it's going through yeah so one of the things that i was thinking about when going through the whole process is is it going to be less steps if i sign in with google or my email 
And I have a gut feeling, I don't know this for sure, but I have a feeling that Salesflare knows that it probably takes a little less steps if you just allow access to their Gmail than if you went through the standard email option. And so I am not 100% sure, but I imagine that would probably be a logical case. And yeah. I'm all for that. Okay, so now that we're logged in, we see work less. Uh, Salesflare does the data input for you, so you can focus on what matters. Okay, so that's pretty. The personalization there somehow. Like I, I would, I would love to have somebody stand up personal. You know, can can talk to me like that and just it, it's it's yeah. showing the job that's also good. But I feel that high hazard work less. Um, Salesflare does the input for you, so you can focus on what matters. So a little bit of personalization would have helped here. Yeah, and I think that's a really great opportunity to just show like how much less data input you'd have to do here if they could kind of use whether it's Clearbit or some other API, whether it's pulling your logo or something to really see the power of the platform right away. So that would be really cool. Um, now we can be in control, bring overview, and you rock. Okay, <laughs> sell smart. And so one of the things that I see they're doing here that's really smart is they're building up motivation in two very powerful ways. So one, they're basically taking you through all of the value propositions. And then what do you have behind here? This is called the promised land, according to Sam Aholek, where you're seeing the product, you can see everything else, kind of get excited about it, you want to dive in, but you just got to go through a couple little steps. So I like this, they're front loading motivation right away. That's smart. So now we're in the product and we see an empty state here, which is saying welcome and we'll help you sell more with less work. That sounds like a deal to me. And yeah. I wanna take it for a spin. I mean, that's really the only option here and that's well done on Salesflare's yeah. part because that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and they do give you two options, right? So you can skip the tour at the same time if you want. Yeah, definitely. So here's your first account. Okay. So they have some dummy data, so you're not feeling that it's empty. You have to put some input. You already understand some kind of details in there. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay, so contacts. So I'm not sure. Like, what are your thoughts on these little tooltips immediately? Um, um, I think these tooltips are kind of building up for you. That's that's why that's why I want you to go through this uh, because these, these tooltips are just trying to tell you what to do next. So yeah. this one is. Is, is useful but this one is very useful. so let's create your first opportunity when you create the first opportunity so yeah. you like they want you to create something right so they want you to do certain step and they drive you in certain action i think this is useful especially when you know that you don't know about the platform what it does exactly there it's not a brand like hubspot so let's just do and see what it does actually yeah now i would be curious though to see like how many people just like immediately go through those first few tooltips because it's like oh there's a phone number oh there's account name you kind of know it when you see it. So I'm not sure if it's really, it kind of warrants having to go through the whole step. Whereas you're right, like this one step here is the first one where it's like, it's action oriented. This is gonna yeah. get me closer to creating my first deal. So I'm not sure if even creating that first opportunity would be the, the best step. And so I'm just gonna create it. And now I'm gonna check out the opportunities. Okay, so I have my first sales funnel already. This is looking like good progress and Organize your program and drag and drop. Yeah, you have to drag and drop it. Okay, that's kind of glitchy. You have to put it to one, drag this to the opportunity one. So you have to say in the one. So it says that on the right side, drag up to here. I think this could have done better. Like, I mean, they could oh, have actually. Yeah, okay. So I totally didn't even see drag opportunity here. I was just like, well, logically, you don't just drag a lead to close one. I mean, I wish I could just close deals like that. But that is a nice success state. But I think it could definitely be um, a little easier to see on the one side to make it obvious that that was what I had to do. So, okay, connect your calendar. And now they have just a checklist of some other steps. And yeah. three is really to get access to that mobile app, which is something I didn't know about because it wasn't really communicated well on the website. So what are your, your thoughts on this? I, I think they could just like, so after you connect your Gmail or calendar, it becomes much more powerful. First of all, you can see the, um, you can see the accounts and contacts there. So it just gets much better after this stuff, just to give you some understanding. Yep. Um, I think mobile is the best thing they have. Um, 
and uh, that they're so different compared to other CRM platforms just because it's mobile app. Because yeah. um, when I was using this app, um, they gave me auto reminders without me creating those reminders, and that was amazing. So I think they don't do this mobile um, feature adoption really well, um, especially in the first run. And I, I get it why they don't do it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of options and they should limit these options options here and then let the user decide which one to choose. Yeah, and I definitely think that the way this is being displayed could be done a lot better. So whether it's becoming like an expert user or something like what LinkedIn does whenever you first sign up, I just find that the fact I even have to scroll here just makes you feel like, oh, there's, there's a lot here. And what would be nice, maybe if it was on like a checklist or something where I, I could still see it, I could I'd be exploring the rest of the product. But if I had those steps in a checklist format that's accessible, like as soon as I feel like I click out of here, I'm going to lose it. So I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think, I think checklist would have made much more sense. You're, I agree because the thing is a CRM is a very powerful tool and has too, it is too complex. Yeah. Um, and um, you don't know what you need to do first, second, third, or fourth, the way the founders or company has made it. I think the checklist would have definitely helped you to just to see, okay, you've done these and now you completely, you understand what the product does. Um, yeah, checklist would be a really good option here. Yeah, so I think overall, in terms of the onboarding, Salesforce has done a really good job front loading the motivation. So we saw at the beginning, there was those three main value propositions that they made us all walk through. And then they were showcasing what the product looked like in the background. So from a motivation perspective, Salesforce did really, really well. I just think from a activation perspective, they could have cut out at least three to four steps in this whole process to really just get me to create that first opportunity. And they could have probably made it a little bit easier for me to actually see how do I get this lead to close one? Because I, I totally missed that. And that took me a little while to see, oh, okay, I have to drag it to close one. So that's my overall feedback. And Zara, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. So I have actually created an onboarding for a CRM platform. And trust me, it's tough to actually show those contacts and opportunities in the first place. Um, so what I did was I created a checklist to do that. And so that the people can just say, okay, you know, that's how you import your contacts and then start an opportunity. Um, so I think um, I, I still agree that the way they have done this onboarding and just reduce one, one tool tip. Um, so when I went through the whole app, what I uh, loved about that, I, as I said, the mobile app was amazing. What they don't do is they have a very linear kind of an onboarding. So if you get emails later on, um, their onboarding is like uh, three days, seven days, 11 days, and 14 days onboarding. Um, that could be much better um, from my side. I think uh, they, have, they have a lot of custom events, for example, opportunities, campaigns, insights, installing the mobile app. They just tell you every two, three days that you should add this rather than thinking what you are doing inside the app. Right. Um, so I they should, they should definitely focus a lot on custom events. If the user has done X, show them Y. If the user has done Y, then show them Z. So that's what I feel that's missing inside the app. Um, the mobile app, they should really definitely add this into the checklist. I think uh, as soon as you have this mobile app, you say, oh, HubSpot is on the email, but I can actually use it on my mobile. And, and, mm -hmm. and then you can, you're, you're, you're hooked. Like you're hooked on the website and you're hooked on the, on the mobile. And the last thing I, I, I loved about one thing, which... Uh, so after, I think they have created some kind of intercom connection after first week, they asked me, how was your first week? And I, I don't know, I clicked on something and the pop-up came and said, hey, how was your first week? So I really felt personal. Um, I really liked that part about it. Um, yeah, I think they should focus more on custom events, mobile and focus more on email. Um, so focus more on feature adoption um, so that they can uh, leverage this whole 14 day experience. The users can uh, leverage the whole 14 day experience really well. Yeah, uh, that sounds great. Cool. So that's all from my side. Yeah. Likewise. Perfect. Well, I hope they found this useful. <laughs> Have a great day.